Hi, uh, Jim Colt here uh, with Maverick CNC. I, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about um, small shop applications. So, uh, we, uh, I, I've done a few videos uh, talking about the new Maverick CNC machine that we just installed in my um, in my farm shop. Uh, we're here in a uh, an old uh, military-style Quonset building. This came with the farm I bought in North Carolina uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, and I'm just barely uh, just pulling out an old machine that I had, CNC machine, and putting a Maverick CNC machine in. But I want to kind of talk about the wh wh why do you need a CNC plasma in a farm shop? What, what am I going to do with it here? And um, I guess that answer, you know, will, time will tell. Um, but I've already made a few things. I had to make a three-point hitch adapter for my tractor to haul trailers around in the yard. Out here, it's much more handy than having to hook it onto my truck. Uh, a, a few other things along those lines, but these are some things that I actually brought with me from my old small shop, which was back in New Hampshire, which was also a farm shop. Um, but just you can see a few samples here. And uh, being a, it, before I retired, I was a 41-year uh, veteran at Hypertherm. I worked for Hypertherm for a long time, so I do use Hypertherm plasma, which is. Uh, you know, known in the industry as the best plasma cutter out there, best consumable life, best cut quality, and so forth. Um, so these these are some examples of what you can do. And uh, some of these p actual parts here uh, came as a result of uh, being contacted by a customer that had a similar machine to this, and they couldn't get. In, in this particular example here, they were making a part that looked a lot like this one. It was a curved part, and it was part of a tractor implement uh, that had to do with uh, getting pins in the right holes and uh, making adjustments on the three-point hitch. Um, but the, this particular customer said, I can't get good hole quality. When I, when I, whenever I plasma cut holes, and he was doing it on 3 8 inch material, so I drew up a part and cut a piece of 3 8 inch steel uh, with holes using all of my techniques for plasma cutting. And uh, when you actually look at them, um, the, the holes look very nice and round. These were not drilled. These were cut with a PowerMax 65 or a PowerMax 45 plasma cutter, either one. And I did them at on 3 8 inch steel at 45 amps. And when when you cut holes, the, the one of the most important things that's hard to believe is that the height control, the torch to work distance, has to be very accurate in order to maintain the least amount of taper in the hole. So what you ideally want when you drill a bolt hole is the bottom of the hole and the top of the hole to be the same size so the bolt doesn't wobble too much. Um, you can drill them. It takes longer. I can plasma cut each of these holes in no time at all. So this is a, I'm thinking it's a three-quarter inch bolt, three-quarter inch hole. Fits very nicely. This is a three-eighths inch bolt in a three-eighths hole on three-eighths inch steel plate. Still very tight, very accurate uh, fits. So. Uh, can you make good holes? Yes. If you have good torch height control, if you have a good plasma, if you're running it at its lowest possible power level using the lowest, the correct consumables, uh, and if you use some techniques like, uh, uh, or if you have a machine that has good acceleration, good fluidic motion, uh, those are the keys to cutting good holes. Um, you can you can contact Mashi Tech, and uh, that we do have uh, we do have some information about uh, hole techniques and things like that that could be forwarded to you. It's a, there's actually a, a paper that I wrote a few years ago telling how to uh, optimize hole quality with with plasma cutting. Um, so that's that, that's one thing. Uh, hole quality has always been an issue. Um, another thing is. Um, one thing I don't have in this shop that I'd like to have is a press brake. I'd like to be able to bend, you know, 10 gauge or quarter inch steel. Um, so there's, there are some techniques you can do without having a press brake if you have a CNC plasma cutter. Now this is a bracket that was used on, I'm trying to think it might have been, an, uh, if I remember correctly, it was uh, it welded onto the frame of a vehicle and it was a body mount. So the, the actual vehicle, the truck body was mounted on this. There were some other holes in the top. Um, so I had somebody that wanted uh, four or five of these parts cut. Uh, and without a press brake, what I did is I programmed all of the outside holes. Uh, and then I did some stitch cuts. This part's already been bent. Uh, that left just small areas of material in this area. Small enough so I could actually bend this part by hand. 
So I bent it by hand, checked up to make sure it was nice and square with a square, uh, and then welded these corners in with a welder. I do have a welder in my shop. I don't have a press brake. So uh, you get a part that looks like it was bent uh, professionally in a, uh, in a shop with the, with the right tools, and you can do it in my little farm shop here without all the uh, heavy industrial equipment. So things like that. This is another one, another car part. Uh, a buddy of mine builds hot rods, and he needed some LS Chevy motor mount brackets. Now, if you're, if you're a car nut, you'll know what that is. Uh, LS is the latest V8 motors that Chevrolet has been building for years, and a lot of people like to put those engines in hot rods. Well, this is a, a, a typical LS motor mount. Uh, you can buy these from a bunch of manufacturers for about a, a pair of them for about $65. Well, that's about, um, it's quarter inch steel. It's probably, if I've just bought the steel to make two of these, it would probably be about uh, $3 worth of steel, if that, maybe $2.50. So they were cut, a rectangle was cut in the, the back plate, and a little tab was cut in these plates. They were put in, welded with a MIG welder, and ground off. Throw some paint on it, and you've got a, a $3 part that replaces a part you can normally buy for $65. So, so yeah, the, there's a lot of, lot of real cool things that you can do if you're, uh, if you're a tightwad like me and, and like to make these, these kind of parts. This is, a, this is a car part. It was a coil bracket for some kind of engine. I'm not sure the relevance of showing it to you, but this will be one that's recognized by a lot of the car people, too. It's a, a header um, flange for probably a V6 engine. There are three... Uh, exhaust ports on each side uh, and this was uh, this was actually the guy had the part and he needed two more of them and so I put this on the uh, my printer in my office pushed the scan button sent that to my computer without actually drawing a CAD part uh, but just doing a little bit of touch-up on it I was actually able to make this these header brackets very accurately in a very short period of time um, other things uh, that are really cool uh, is Software has the ability to make things like sprockets. Uh, this is a, I, I needed a part for, it was actually for an interesting application. Um, it was an alumni day parade in my hometown back in New Hampshire. And uh, my graduating class from high school from about 100 years ago was, uh, uh, we were building a float with a the theme, The Wizard of Oz. And we needed, a, we needed a tall pole with Dorothy's house spinning in the wind being blown away by the, by the hurricane, and uh, in order to do that, I needed a 12-volt motor and a chain drive and a and a sprocket. And I'm thinking, where am I going to buy the sprocket? Do I have to go to Tractor Supply or something and try to see what they have in stock? And then I remembered I had a CNC plasma cutting table sitting in my shop. I looked up, sure enough, one of the functions was uh, a a tool to lay out sprockets that, that fit a particular chain size. And in about uh, 10 minutes. Boom, I had a sprocket for the float, and Dorothy's house spun very well for the entire parade. So it worked out real good. And another local guy restores and replicates antique furniture. He needed some little brackets for a cabinet like this. He had one. Once again, I used the printer method, printed off a, a copy of the actual part, a couple of the parts that he wanted to cut, and uh, it worked very well. Um, one of the common things with plasma cutting is the potential buyers for CNC plasma think, and I, I, you know, I think it's a natural thought that, yeah, I'm only going to be cutting thin material, maybe thinner than thinner than an eighth of an inch, um, so I don't need to buy the best machine. Well, interestingly enough, it's much harder to cut thin material with a plasma cutter and get good tolerances and good quality than it is to cut thick material like this piece of one inch steel right here. This is very nice cut quality on the one inch, very nice on this 12 gauge steel. Um, but the machine had to go, in order to get this nice cut, it had to go at maybe 200 to 300 inches per minute, where on this one inch steel I was probably cutting at about uh, 8 to 10 inches a minute. Um, Eight to ten inches a minute is very easy for a CNC machine to stay on track and to do things very accurately. 300 inches a minute is very difficult for the machine. So you need a machine with good acceleration rates, uh, very tight construction, and thin material can be done very well. But once again, thin is harder than thick. It also produces 
a little bit more smoke in the cutting process. Um, thin material smoke just billows off the table. When you cut thick material like this at higher power levels, the particles of molten metal that are dropping off the bottom are way heavier than air. They just fall down in the bottom of the table and there's a lot less smoke. Uh, and then there's always, you're putting something back together and you just can't find a simple part like a washer that goes on it. Well, you're probably not going to find a stainless steel washer this size at the local Home Depot or the Ace Hardware. Um, but I can draw this just from the, uh, the simplest of CAD drawings. It's a couple of circles. And I can draw it and cut it in less than a minute. I mean, it's that simple. Um, and this was an actual part. I was uh, replacing the shift cable on my boat. And there's a stainless steel washer that goes through the transom. Yeah, you need two of them. You need some grease to go on it, and then the shift cable comes out to do the shifting. And I took two of these off it when I took the old shift cable out. I looked all over the garage and could not find them anywhere. Then I remembered I had the plasma table. and went over, and in a minute, I had a brand new stainless steel washer. Uh, and as soon as I got this installed, I found the other one laying on the floor right where I was looking for it before. So anyway, that's, that's, all, that's happened to all of us. Um, and then, of course, art. Uh, that's a, an actual drawing of an old motorcycle I had. And uh, uh, back in New Hampshire, there's a, there's a lot of moose running around in the, in the country. So instead of having a, a biker dude sitting on it, I got a moose driving the motorcycle. So, uh, but there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, this takes, when you're doing artwork like this, uh, there, there are hundreds and hundreds of sites, uh, especially on Etsy, uh, where you can find drawings, CAD, not, CAD, not actual CAD drawings, although you can find them as well, but mostly, um, you know, drawings that are in a uh, raster or, or raster to vector form that you can turn into a CAD file real easily. So you can find all kinds of motorcycles or virtually anything you can imagine, horses, animals, uh, and you can download those files. And with a little bit of work in the Maverick CNC uh, control, you can, uh, you can do just about anything. So. Um, these in aluminum cutting, uh, not, a, not a lot of other good ways to do it. Plasma does a great job. Now, if you're looking for, if you're looking for absolutely the tightest tolerances on the thinnest materials with absolute perfection in cuts, you know, there's other processes. There are laser cutting systems. Maverick CNC's parent company, Mashitech, makes uh, laser cutting systems. There are water jet cutting systems. But the, the lowest price from a purchase point of view and an operating cost point of view is plasma. So plasma is very popular in a small shop like my farm shop or in small companies that may only have, may have less than 10 employees and they've got one machine in a shop to do, you know, whatever kind of metal work that they do. Um, but uh, it's a great process and it's a, it's a relatively low cost and it's by far the lowest cost way to cut steel um, air plasma on a Maverick CNC cutting table. So that's uh, uh, one more thing I guess I did want to point out. This is, uh, I don't know if you can zoom in on it. It says, built by Jim Colt. This is a piece of stainless steel. And uh, if you have a Hypertherm PowerMax 45 XP, uh, you can use the marking process. So uh, you, you can use the marking process using argon on stainless steel and get a pretty good etch like that. Now, it's not normally used for things like this. It's used for a plate layout where a bolt hole has to be drilled you know, accurately or uh, layout lines where you're going to bend something, where you're going to start and stop a weld. Uh, but there is etching capability with some plasma cutting systems as well. The new Maverick CNC that I put in my farm shop here has, uh, does have a pneumatic uh, scribe marker. So uh, we can do this on virtually any material uh, uh, with very accurate results. So th th those are some of the things you can do. The rest is up to your imagination.